Hello everyone, welcome back for part two of our optional attachment add-ons to our really cute functional versatile bag. And as you can see from the photo, I thought of yet another idea where you can put a thermos in it or a cup stopping at your favorite cafe or coffee shop and it would make a really nice gift too if you were going to visit someone you could pick up their favorite drink put it inside and give them the two in one or visiting a friend who may be feeling a little down or not feeling well just to help perk up their day and the link for part one of this tutorial is in the description box and the comment section below. Okay, and now it's time to have a little decorating fun if you want to. You don't have to. I think they look just fine and cute the way they are. Now in the other bags, I did not have an issue with my strap kind of rippling and wrinkling a little bit. I don't know, if I, that must be the yarn, how it worked up, because I did it in the same way. So what you can do if you want, you can take an iron, you can just steam it out, of course, on the setting that's right for the fabric. Keep the iron above your fabric, just so you don't scorch it or melt it. Or you can just dampen it a little bit with a little spray bottle or um, run it under the sink. Don't saturate it, but just dampen it enough to where it's wet and then just smooth it out with your hand and you can let it, you can pin it and let it air dry. Or I think if you wet it and then just hang it in the weight of the bag and it'll dry and it'll smooth out just fine. See and just even by me running my hand over it dry like this, it's already smoothing out quite a bit. Okay. So now as far as decorating, first I'll start with the little loop and button closure if you want something just to, for that added touch and that can serve in a functional way also. And these, these are my tail ends that I need to sew in. So you will have a front and a back to that, so decide which side of your, is your front where you want the button and which side will be the back. I think they all look pretty much the same unless you are using a yarn that comes out a little bit different on each side. Now at first I was going to use this purple button, but I think the scale of this button is too small and the color too. It goes, but it kind of disappears at the same time. So I'm going with a contrasting button, a large one, which I think stands out even more. And then with the yarn around, it's going to make it pop nicely. Okay, so tell me, what do you think? I, I don't want to make it look necessarily childish, although it could be for a child. Either way, that'll look pretty good, especially sewing the button down with the purple yarn. It'll tie it all in. Okay, so where I have my stitch marker, that's where I'm going to put my chain loop, and the other side will be the front side, and this is where it has more of the white flex coming through. So to me, uh, this made more sense as where to put that. So. You want to count your stitches, all right, from, from end to end running just across the front, not including the, the two stitches, one on each side that kind of are, are offset at an angle that are part of the base of your strap. So don't count that stitch or this stitch, which again is offset at the angle. But just count across the rest of the stitches going across the top. So I have 13, which is the same on both sides. It gives us an odd number, which is good because then it gives me a center stitch to work a loop into. Okay, so I have 13, so I went across to my seventh stitch, which gives me six on either side and puts me right in the center. Okay, that's where I'm going to attach 
my yarn and I'm going to go with the same color you could color control if you want and maybe dig in there and find maybe if the other end perhaps began with the darker color could do that I'm just going to work from the edge here so it the end of the ball I mean so it blends in and take your stitch marker out I would go through two stitches on the side facing you and the two stitches on the other side you have the double up because of the slip stitch so going into the single crochet stitches and the slip stitches on top just for a little more security to anchor that in attach your yarn as usual and chain one to lock that in and then down tight and then just just make chains and I would keep them tight anyway I wouldn't um, over tighten them to where they bunched up and however many you do will depend on the thickness of your yarn, the type of bottle that you're putting in. If the bottle is inside of the bag of the holder and it's recessed, then you don't need extra to go over the top. So, But if your bottle extends beyond the top, allow for enough chain to be able then, say if your bottle sticks up to here, Make sure you have a long enough chain to go over your bottle and then to connect around your button. And the button will be here. There's your loop coming across the top and you want it long enough to be able to go around your button and then fit securely and without a lot of extra chain that's kind of gaping and hanging out there in the breeze. and I take my time on the finishing work to make sure everything's nice even consistent and if you need to you can go down a hook size for this portion and then I would slip stitch make sure your chain is not twisted and slip stitch back in to that same stitch going through all those same loops. Lock that down. Make sure your tail end is locked down and then sew, cut your yarn. You can make a little knot at the base of this one and then you can tuck that in real well so it's not visible. Sew in all your ends and then flip it over to the front okay and place your button in the center and attach that and you can you can line it up with your loop or you can count your stitches to make sure it's just going to right falling into the center there okay and then you have a nice little button closure loop I'll finish mine off camera. It just, you know, kind of funny how just something so simple like that and that just takes a few minutes to do can add so much more to the overall piece. It just gives it such a nice look, nice little finishing touch. Okay, so there we go. You get the idea. All right, so that's that. And then now if you want to make a self cinch tie and grab your yarn and just going to make another chain oh you know I wanted to show you these I pulled these buttons out oh, wouldn't that be adorable 
I'm tempted to do a button loop on this one too. How cute. How cute is that for summertime? You could even just add a button without the loop. I think that would look super cute that way too. But I do want to show you how to work the chain. You just make your slip knot as usual, okay? However you make yours. And I would make this chain a little bit tighter, so you might want to go down. Just so this the uh, the chain, the stitches are close together and there are no gap spaces. So it looks more like a braid. And then you chain approximately two and a half times the circumference of what your bag is. You can always add more to it if you need to and if you have too much you can pull some out and you can decide how long you want the tie to come down on your bag. I think a little ways down looks nice. Elongates it nice added touch and it's really easy to weave it through the holes that we made for it earlier and to put on a little bead at the end very simple all right I've made my long chain and leave the other end of your chain still attached to the ball of yarn do yourself a favor grab a large eye blunt tip yarn needle Feed that tail end through, so you don't have to try to poke that through with your fingers and into a small space. It can be kind of tedious and might risk snagging your yarn. All right, so find your center. You can count over. You can kind of eyeball that. This looks to be about my center, so I'm going to go to the left of that and insert into the space, that first chain one space we created from front to back and I do feed my chain a little at a time and I can pull it through a little more than halfway and then go back to front, you skip over, you go over behind the single crochet and up through the next chain one space and making sure that your chain is facing front and is flat. Okay, then go over top of the next single crochet and down into the next chain one space. So front to back, back to front, over the single crochet, down into the hole, up and down, you're just weaving it through, up and down, okay? Keeping your chain straight. You might need to untwist that. That's why I do not do too many at one time. I'm back around to the front. So I decide, okay, how long I want these. Oops, okay, I made that a little bit too long. I don't want it that long. I don't think I want either side that long. And then you decide also if you want it long enough to make a bow, you can do that. That looks pretty cute. Or you can just tie. You can, well, first of all, it acts as a cinch tie. You see it easily slides in and out. Okay. Or you can just do a little knot and, and it'll, you have enough yarn there, enough with texture grip with the chain that it'll hold either way. But if you want a bow, then you're going to have to chain extra so you have the length for the bow. I'm not going to do one. So I've decided, oh, I think I want my chain to hang down a little below the halfway point and then I'm going to have a bit of a tail that I leave at the end. So I am feed back through the extra I don't need and then I'm going to feed that back around all the way back around back to the front again. And this way you can really customize to the length however much that you want or need depending on the size of your bag. 
Okay, just pull that extra through. Make sure that you keep the base of your bag flat and smooth, that it doesn't get cinched in, so that your um, chain isn't too long or, or shorter than you intended. And then the part, the last portion here, because we, we fed it through and now we have the end that's still attached, so now you can just pull back and take out any extras that you don't need. Make sure they're straight and then just back up to the other half and then cut your tail. Okay. And make your knot. Just pull your tail end through your loop and now you have a little knot at the end to close that. Okay, and then now take your bead. Okay. The hole is large enough you can just feed your tail end through. And if it's a little bit smaller, then you can use your yarn needle as long as the yarn needle and the yarn fit through. Okay, you can test that out. I slide mine up. I go over like I bring it up beyond where my braid is a little bit and then I'm just going to do an overhand knot. So wrap it around and I bring it up a little bit up above and then I put my loop through because sometimes if I try to knot it with the loop down below the knot lines up way down here. So I bring it up and then secure that where I want it up at the top and I'm overlapping my base slip knot. That's how I'm doing it. And then I tighten it as I'm sliding it up at the same time. Okay. So I did overlapping over the left. Now I'm going to do it in the other direction over the right. Bring it through again. Tighten and slide it a little as I guide that with my finger. And then I'm trying to get that on top of the knot that I just made. And hopefully two will do. You just want that thick enough to be able to keep your bead from sliding off and make sure your knot is secure and that it isn't going to come apart. Okay, and you can do it one more time if you need to. So I'm going to go back in the direction that I started and that bring that down over top of my knot and secure that nice and tight. Bring it down. You can poke some of it through your bead if you like. Okay just to secure that and then you can I just leave the tail end on it I know I think that looks kind of cute hanging down if it bothers you you can take a smaller yarn needle and pull your bead back and you can feed that up through and bury it a little bit on the inside I have done that before also okay and then you just repeat the same process for the other side. I think they make really fun novelty gifts but yet very useful at the same time. People really enjoy them and they just would be a fun little thank you or just because you're thinking of someone. Yeah I decided on this one to go ahead and weave in my ends. The other bag where I had the double strand together and I made the braid I think that looked better with the two strands coming down, looked a more, little bit more like fringe. And so yeah, I just took the end and I carefully wove it through a little bit, the strand, a couple of strands at the bottom to secure that. And then I slid my bead up and I went through the stitches, the chain from front to back and then up 
and overlapped and went through and back to front just like when you weave in your ends and then did that a couple of times, secured the top and then I fed the tail end down through the bottom and then I just snipped it off just like that. Yep, that was all there was to it. Okay my fiber friends, well that is another tutorial for the books. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will let me know if you make it, what you made it in, if you made it for yourself or someone else, the length of the strap, how you plan on using it, and what you're going to put in it. <laughs> All right, well please take good care as always. Stay well. I hope you'll come back again next time for more yarny fun together. I sure enjoyed being here with you, and I hope you enjoyed being here with me too. All right, until next time, be good, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.